Hello everyone and welcome back to Math 301. And today we're finally returning to the Tower of Hanoi. This showed up in one of the first videos for this class. It's a combinatorial problem about moving these disks from one peg to another. And at any stage, you can only move one disk at a time and you can't put a larger disk on top of a smaller disk. The question is how many moves do you need to do that? So we'll start, let's say we had only two disks, ignore everything after the green one. It will take one, two, three moves to move two disks. If we wanna keep going, it then takes four, five, six, seven moves to move three disks. And we'll see that that's not a coincidence because the number of ways it takes to move n disks is two to the power of n minus one. But that's only true if you do it as efficiently as possible. And so backing up one second, let's say that we were at this fourth step of moving three disks. We now need to move the yellow one but there is a choice. We could move it to dark blue or light blue. And it turns out that if you wanna be most efficient about this, you need to move this yellow disc to the dark blue because the light blue needs to stay free for the green one to go on it. So those were the seven moves to move the three discs. Let's keep on going. So, um, we're gonna move the dark blue one here. And it turns out that, again, there's a choice here. You wanna move the yellow one to, uh, to the dark blue. And then you keep going. Again, we're gonna keep the light blue one free so that the green one can land on it. And if you counted that as I was going through that, you can see that's 15 moves in order to move four disks and 15 is two to the fourth minus one. Okay, so I'll let you figure out how to move all the other disks. And let's take a look at the recurrence relation for this. So here's a picture of the situation when we have six disks. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna let HN be the number of moves it takes the minimal number of moves for n disks. And we already saw that, um, well, h1 is one, h2 is three, h3 is seven. If you count it carefully, we did 15 moves to move four disks. And so the conjecture that you want to say is that hn is two to the n minus one. And in order to prove that conjecture, we're first gonna develop a recurrence relation for hn. The way this recurrence relation works is to think about the difference between moving, let's say five disks and moving six disks. So it takes h five steps to move five disks from one peg to another. Then we need one move to move the biggest disk. And then you need H5 disks, H5 moves to move five disks onto the biggest disk. So what we just drew a picture of there is that H6 is H5, plus one plus H5. And more generally, that's an example of the recurrence relation that we have, which is that HN is two times the previous value plus one. All right, so this is our recurrence relation and we can check that it matches with the data we have so far that if you double the previous number and add one, you move from the number one to three to seven to 15. 
So this is the recurrence relation and our initial value is, is H1 being one. So this is not a linear recurrence relation because of this extra one hanging out on the side here. But it, it turns out that uh, one way of, of solving these is to think about it being almost like a linear recurrence relation, but then we have this extra stuff. And so the dominant term here is doubling at every step. And so it kind of makes sense that we're gonna get something of the form two to the N as the dominant term of HN. But it's not um, exactly doubling because we're adding this amount here. And it turns out this is the adjustment we need to make in order to account for that. So let's now uh, use the, let's use the initial value and the recurrence relation. So we know that H1 is one and that Hn is two Hn minus one plus one. Those are the things we know. And let's uh, prove that Hn is two to the N minus one. We're gonna do this by induction, the base case when N equals one, one does equal two to the one minus one. So that's good. And now our inductive hypothesis is that H N minus one is two raised to the power N minus one minus one. And so now we're gonna prove a formula for H N. So we know that H N is two H N minus one plus one by the recurrence relation Then we can write this as two times two to the N minus one minus one plus one. What we did is we just uh, substitute for H N minus one by the inductive hypothesis. And now we simplify that. Here we have two raised to the power n minus one plus one. So that's two to the n. I'm gonna to distribute to get minus two plus one. And that simplifies as two to the n minus one. All right, and so we, we just prove this by induction. So that's all for the Tower of Hanoi. There's some really interesting problems here about trying to find a general strategy for the most efficient way to move the disks from one, um, one peg to another. And I've already given you a hint by saying that for sure, the yellow one may not be on the light blue one because we need to save space for the green one to be on the light blue one. So the yellow one can be on the green one, but you can never put it on the light blue one and see if you can extend that pattern to make a and make a, an algorithm to actually solve the Tower of Hanoi. Okay, see you next time.